There are legends and there, then there are those who are in a class by themselves like Muhammad Ali, the three-time world heavyweight champion and political provocateur, died late Friday night at the age of 74. Here to talk to us about the greatest of all time is a guy who's pretty great himself. Robert Lipside, who's the esteemed sports journalist who wrote the obituaries about Ali in both the New York Times and a special commemorative edition of Time Magazine. Bob, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. I want to start with the story you start your piece with, which is one of the great moments probably in your career, looking back at least, which is the day you were there when the Beatles met Muhammad Ali. I, you know, I wish I had been more attuned <laughs> to history or could look ahead and have appreciated it more. I just remember that, that these guys were kind of in the way and I had to interview this fighter. I'd been sent down. I, I got the assignment to cover the first Liston Clay fight. In Miami. In Miami in 1964 uh, because the real reporter didn't think it was worth his time. Clay was going to get knocked out in the first round. Uh, Liston was unbeatable. And I was told as soon as I get Miami, rent a car, drive back and forth between the arena and the closest hospital so that I would waste no deadline time following Cassius Clay into intensive care. So that was kind of what was in my mind. Um, I went to the uh, gym where he was uh, working out. He had not arrived yet. And right behind me were these these four funny little guys with British accents <laughs> and messy hair. Like around my age, they were wearing matching white cabana jackets. And we were all pushed into a dressing room to wait for Clay. What had happened, which I didn't know right away, was uh, they were on their first American visit. They had gone for a photo op with Sonny Liston. Liston took one look at them and said, I ain't posing with them sissies. <laughs> and so they were stuffed back in a limo, I guess the last time you stuffed the Beatles anywhere, and they, and they drove to, to Clay's camp for so a tell second us, photo tell us about op. The, when they finally meet him, what yeah. happens? The five of us gasp. We had never seen such a beautiful creature in our lives. And he said, come on, Beatles, let's make some money. And they went into the ring, and, and this is on YouTube now, and... Uh, as if they had choreographed it. The Beatles stood in a row. He tapped the first one. They went down like dominoes. Then they formed a pyramid you know, to try to hit him. And it pretty much was over. So I put on a show, the Beatles leave, and what does Ali say to you? He says to me, who were those little sissies? <laughs> so I don't feel so bad about not knowing yeah. who the Beatles were Incredible. either. I want to ask you a question about politics, because this is basically a political show. And Ali, in addition to his athletics, was obviously a huge political figure in the 60s. You think about him joining the Nation of Islam, changing his name, and then uh, re refusing to be inducted in the uh, armed forces. How, just in the context of that time, how much of a political earthquake did those series of things cause? They were enormously uh, important politically, and socially, and religiously. Uh, and I think that what gets forgotten so quickly was here is this emotionally stunted, insecure, uh, you know, 22 year old kid, but younger, uh, out of an abusive home, who goes to the nation of Islam for some sort of security and father figure. And suddenly, you know, he's caught in the turbulence of one of the, well, the most politically charged time in my life. Uh, and he's uh, against civil rights, he is, he's turned his back on the main religion of America. Right. He's cast off his slave name before, you know, Roots came out and we really knew what that meant. Uh, and, and he is suddenly representing millions of people and is a polarizing figure. And I don't think that he entirely knew what he was talking about at that time. How much do you think that it, that, that it had an effect on just, I mean, it seems to me it was a, a hugely important moment for the merger of politics and sports. Yes. That suddenly you had athletes who saw themselves as needing to or wanting to or being legitimate for them to take these kinds of important stands on important political and social issues. Yeah, but a big very, ripple effect. But very few came even close. I mean, later on, Jim Brown, the football player, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Tommy Smith and John Carlos at the 68. 
Olympics, partially in protest to Ali uh, losing his title. Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King, excellent, yes. Uh, but uh, not to the extent that he seems to have done that. You know, I, I have, my feeling is that he became a political symbol because he was, there was an innocence in blank sleep about him. So it was easy for everybody to put their, their banner, their bumper sticker, their magnet on Muhammad Ali. And, and he was really in the process of changing. I don't believe he really fully understood what he was talking about until he was forced to stop boxing, spent three and a half years going to college campuses, which was the only way he could make any money. Uh, and in the give and take with students, he began, you know, he figured out where, here's a good example. So I just happened to have been there. Uh, 1966, uh, the Senate uh, hearings on the war. You know, um, Maxwell Taylor calls a senator a traitor because he's not behind the... The same day, Ali finds out he's been reclassified 1A, right? The first thing he said, the moment he heard this from an AP reporter, he said, why me? I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. I pay all these taxes. I buy all these bombs and airplanes and helmets for soldiers. You know, why don't they, why don't they draft poor boys from Louisville? Now, you know, at the end of that day, harassed and crazy, he would say, because somebody, you know, the hundredth person says, how do you feel about going to Vietnam next week and having to kill Viet Cong? I got nothing against them, Viet Cong. Whoa. But, you know, in the, in the arc of that day, um, he, he put a white paper out? I don't right. think so. Right, right.